Hi, hi everyone. Okay, welcome to my live stream. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. All right, I was going to talk about uh, China's unemployment problem tonight, and then we saw what happened in Russia today in the past twenty-four hours, and um, the and I thought it's and I and I read I've been following the um, the news all day today and. Except some China experts, very few people talk about the impact, um, the impact on the Chinese and how the Chinese have responded to this um, to, to the Russian crisis, and, and I felt that's missing. So I want to um, use tonight's live stream to talk about that, and we could talk about the unemployment rate next week. All right. So tonight we will um, we will basically. Focus on three top, uh, three agenda items. First, I'll give you a quick overview of what what has happened in Russia in the past twenty four hours for those who have not followed the latest development. And then we will talk about what do the chi the everyday or the average Chinese citizens what what's their response? What do they think and what do they believe? And then we'll talk about the effect on the Chinese PLA. And the CCP leaders. Okay, so those are the three um, three topics. So first, a quick overview on what has happened in Russia in the past twenty four hours. So the strife between the Wagner Group and Russian military leaders have been ongoing and escalated on Friday. The mercenary group hacked Russian state TV to air a long speech by its leader. Uh, Prigozhin, who is the head of the Wagner Group, and in the video he denounced Russian military leaders as evil and corrupt, and called the rationale to attack Ukraine false. And Russia's security agency issued an arrest warrant for him. And a few hours later, Putin said in a televised speech that Russia was stabbed in the back, and the group's action um, was betrayal. Um, and treasonous. Then on Saturday, the Wagner Group captured the southern city of Rostov and sent its fighters um, on its way to Moscow. And they got as close to the city as 200 kilometers away, which is about 130 miles. And Prigozhin had said that he intended to remove the corruption, uh, to to remove. The corrupt and incompetent Russian commanders. He also said that Russia would have a new president. Um, so his group's lightning, uh, has a, the 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 lightning insurrection appeared to develop quickly with little resistance from Russia's regular armed forces, and. Rumors have said that Putin left Moscow and headed to St. Petersburg, although his office denied it. So people questioned, you know, for for a few hours today, people really questioned Putin's hold on power. Right then, in a very dramatic turn, the Belarusian president announced a deal has been reached between Putin and Prigozhin. The Wagner Group had agreed to halt movement. Um, of its fighters across Russia, and the the Kremlin would drop all charges against the the head of the Wagner Group, and that he would move to Belarus. Um, I think the drama is far from over. That's kind of a very quick summary of what has happened today. Uh, I think it's far from over, but one thing we know for sure is Putin's control is slipping from from this. From this development, Friday night he asked his most steadfast supporters,、uh, including the the leaders of、uh, like Kazakhstan, Armenia,、uh, Tajikistan, and、uh, Kyrgyzstan, right, for a public show of support. But but these leaders all stayed mum and calling the situation an internal Russian affair. Um. Now the Russian crisis has a tremendous impact on the Chinese. I think the mainstream media or other media have not had time to to think about it, the impact on the Chinese yet, other than you know YouTubers like myself who who you know who are focused on 
um, China. And that's what I want to fo- what I'm ta- what I want to talk about tonight. Um, the news news about Wagner Group's military operation or what do you say C- coup right coup attempt surged to number one topic in China on all major social media platforms. Um, on Weibo, the hashtag Putin accuses. Prigozhin of treason in his speech had 1.5 billion views in one day. And that's just Weibo, which is the Chinese Twitter. And this does not include other media platforms. And we know China doesn't have 1.4 billion people. And not every person is on social media, although a lot of them are. But the the really old people um, and the people who are extremely poor are not on social media. So that means one on average, one person had more than one view on um, on Weibo, right? Within one day. Um, so I don't remember ever seeing any event in recent years that has generated 1.5 billion views in one day. Um, that's, I mean, I've seen hundreds of millions of views in, in one day or a billion views in several days, but not one, 1. 1.5 billion views in one day. Um, and this level of interest is unprecedented. And that, that's actually, that got me interested in, in doing this live stream because you know, if you think about it, I mean, this is not like a major event that's happening in China, like uh, that, like the Eastern Airline crash or like a major um, social event, like of the fire or um, some kind of social injustice case. And this is Russia. And why would Chinese show such an interest, right, in, um, in a Russian event? Well, the dramatic development in Russia gave the Chinese many reasons to be excited. First, they they feel connected um, to a tough guy who dared to challenge their fearless leader over corruption. And that resonated with Chinese very well. And, and more importantly, Chinese netizens are using um, they can't really directly talk about it, but they use the occasion and, you know, to and also to um, discuss similar possibilities in China um, by comparing what happened in what happened in Russia to other Chinese historical anecdotes. So the idea of a, a coup attempt excited many Chinese. And the 180 degree turn of the event made many Chinese think about the fate of their country and also the possible outcome of a a Taiwan war. Um, Of course, different people have different views. So for example, for people who are pro-CCP, they worry that such drama can unfold in China in the event of war. And they certainly worry about the instability of the regime, right? They, they look at it from that perspective. Um, but for the people who oppose the CCP, they're encouraged and um, by what, hap- what has happened in Russia. And that gave them hope. So uh, this is because a group of, from their perspective, a group of criminals or, or inmates led by a former chef, can organize a coup attempt um, that forced Putin to compromise. Um, So for those who oppose the CCP in China, they think they have a better chance if they get organized. Like they just compare their situation to what has happened in Russia and they they saw hope. Um, So you see, whether they people, it's people who are pro-CCP or um, anti-CCP, they all get um, either excited or worried about what has happened in Russia. Um, But for most Chinese, the direct impact of of this 
Russian crisis is the Iron Man image of Putin is gone. Uh, I talked to some Chinese and they said the CCP has tried so hard to paint, you know, Vladimir Putin as this tough guy, um, as an Iron Man. Um, and many Chinese do, particularly young Chinese, do worship him as a, a, a grand Russian daddy, shall we say. Uh, but now many Chinese question his ability in commanding Russia because it's hard for, again, it's hard for Chinese to believe that a, a mercenary group headed by his former chef can pose any threat. To the Russian, to the to the to the Russian leader, because that's that's a very Chinese perspective, right? Um, yeah, and now historically, again, that's that's for the people who have been brainwashed to believe that Putin is um you know is an Iron Man, and that image is is gone. That has fall apart, fallen apart. Now, there are also many Chinese who do not like Russians or do not like Russia. And this has, this is because historically, the two countries have had many border disputes. And some of the, the now Russian cities on the, on, the, on, the, on the East Coast were Chinese territories. And many older Chinese still remember the atrocities committed by the Soviet Red Army during World War II in northeastern China. Um, such as looting Chinese uh, factories and, and raping Chinese women. So there are, there are uh, some older Chinese who do not trust the Russians. Um, and by the way, if you com if, when Chinese compare Russians with Americans, the Chinese have a much favorable view of the Americans. Um, despite the the government propaganda and this is because china and the united states uh never never fought against his, each other historically and during world war ii the americans helped the chinese fight the japanese um so so the chinese do not you know or i should say for some of the chinese they do not they do not um trust the russians so when this russian crisis emerged or uh, broke out, they, they were to some extent delighted to see that. Um, so yeah, so a weakened Russia uh, is a good news to many of them. Um, now for the, for the little, so I just talked about the general, uh, the, the general public, right? I, I talked about several different groups of people. And, and the last group I wanna talk about is the, the little pinks or the online trolls. And uh, th this is the group of people who are paid by the CCP to, uh, to work for them online. So they are similar. They're, they're what I call the online mercenaries, right? Because they're paid, they're the online troops, militia, online militia paid by the CCP. And this will get them to think carefully about what they're doing and their future. Um, like the Wagner, Wagner Group, they do dirty work for the for the regime for money, um, but it's not a pretty job because they may not like what they do or they may not believe in what they do, and they they do it for their own benefits. Um, so the Wagner Group's struggle, uh, coup attempt, its rise and fall, um, and also what its leaders said about corruption all resonate with them and will certainly make them think because Russia and China are, are very similar, right? They have many similarities. So this event will have an um, a impact on the, on the online, on the virtual mer mercenaries in China. Um, now let's talk about the Chinese military. The CCP's mouthpiece, um, CCTV's military channel, actively updated the development in Russia during the first half of the, the crisis, Friday night um, and Saturday morning. And they post, it, it post hourly updates, almost hourly, um, including reporting Prigozhin's response to Putin's TV address. Uh, remember he said how it's false, you know, 
um, and then that he's he, he's doing this um, to take out corruption in the Russian military. So that I was surprised to see that the the CCTV's military channel actually uh, reported his response. Then the channel remained quiet for 14 hours uh, while the world's media were all over uh, the coup attempt. Uh, so during the 14 hours when the world's media was most active reporting the, the, the development, the, the CCTV's main, main military channel all of a sudden you know, did not say anything. Um, it updated again, of course, after the Afghan agreement was reached, right? It, it showed that the CCP censors didn't know what to do when the event first happened because it happened too quickly. Then it, it figured out that it should remain quiet. And, uh, and so it stopped saying anything um, until the agreement was reached. So I think it also took the CCP propaganda by surprise. Um, I talked to someone who is uh, who is very familiar with um, China and who has spoken with the PLA officers um, recently. Uh, not not directly after. Not directly. Uh, not today. Like not. Um, he didn't talk to the PLA officers while this was happening, but before. And he said that the PLA uh, this event will have a a significant impact on the PLA officers at all levels um, because this will alert them to something that they were not aware of. That is, it made them more aware of their value and the weight they carry in politics. The Russian military and political systems are very similar to those in China. Both countries are authoritarian and run by a dictator. Um, to those who oppose a military operation against Taiwan uh, within the PLA, the Russian coup attempt was a stimulant and was stimulating, thought provoking, and also a confidence booster. Um, this is because seeing that a small troop of 30,000, because 30,000 from the PLA's perspective is a small troop. It's not a big, it's not a large operation, right? It's, it's small from, from their perspective. So this, this seeing that a small troop of 30,000 and made up of mostly inmates, they're not professional uh, servicemen. Um, so 30,000 inmates, um, the fact that they're able to kick up so much dust in, in politics is eye-opening for these PLA officers. And they're now more aware of their value and weight. Um, you know, the Chinese are very good at studying. I'm sure the Chinese PLA officers who are not pro-war, um, and who may oppose Xi Jinping are studying uh, Prigozhin and his Wagner group very closely now. And they're trying to figure out how, uh, how he poses, uh, how he did what he did, right? Now for the military personnel who are pro-CCP and supportive of, of Xi Jinping, um, they also learned something from this, from this um, development. They learn from the. Uh, they learn that a dictator's war is as complex as politics, and that winning and losing are not absolute. In the case of the Wagner Group, their ability to win battles has precisely put them in a risky position, as they uh, has outperformed the the formal uh, the, the regular Russian troops. Um, so the PLA military personnel will learn from the drama in Russia uh, that a troop that has, uh, oh, and also the, the fact that, this is what we talked about, the, the fact that what's striking to them or what made them think is the fact that um, a troop that has made 
hundreds of kilometers advancement in a day can suddenly abandon the plan entirely because their leader reached a deal with the opponent. Because you know, moving, advancing hundreds of kilometers in a day, uh, in in a on a battlefield is not a small achievement, right? You. That means basically you have no opposition, so you can move so fast that you can advance like hundreds of kilometers. So the fact that they have made that advancement and then all of a sudden they can abandon their plan because their leader has reached a deal with the opponent, that will get the PLA officers all think um, think about it. That will keep them thinking. Um you have to keep in mind that a lot of them have been brainwashed, right? It's especially the, at the at the junior level, at the lower level, they may not. The senior level officers are probably more uh, better tuned to what's happening globally, but the lower level people just follow their leaders. So, but then if if the I mean, they must have learned this from from their friends and families, or you know. I mean, one point five billion, one point five billion views within one day. That means everybody in China knows about it. Uh, so they they must have known. So if they have known and they are in military service, they must be thinking. I mean, the drama must have made them start to think. Um. The Chinese media remain mostly quiet, except an except an article on a finance portal, Caixin dot com today, that said that、uh, Prigozhin, once a close ally and friend of Putin, is now the biggest factor of instability in the Russian military.、Um, that's a pretty. If you think about it, it, I mean, this is nothing new for us to hear, or nothing dramatic for us to hear. But if you a, Ch- a Chinese, you live in a in a world of censorship, and if you are not, if you've been indoctrinated with CCP's propaganda about the war, and if you hear this, you say, "Wow, Putin's ally is now the biggest <laughs> factor of instability in in the Russian military." It's like, what is happening? Like that statement itself. That's actually the title.、Uh, what I read you is 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 the title. Is the headline? It says,、uh, "Prigozhin, once a close ally and friend of Putin, is now the biggest factor of instability in the Russian military." So that's a very very that's like a a, a thunder a thunder storm over the head of a lot of Chinese.、Um, and even the even the former chief editor of Global Times, which is the English version of People's Daily, right? The the English mouthpiece, Hu Xijin,、uh, said that he already said that destroying the Wagner Group is no easy task for the Russian military. So all of these information here and there will make the Chinese think.、Um, now let's talk about the CCP leaders. As the CCP leaders watched how Prigozhin and Putin's 30 years of personal relationship ended in a drama that severely undermined Putin's power,、uh, they don't worry what happens to 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 the Wagner Group. They only worry about Putin's power, right? So that worries they worry that similar types of、uh, mutiny will happen in China. Xi Jinping's biggest concern is a dynastic change. And losing control over the PLA,、um, like most Chinese, he's very shocked to see an amateur or an amateurish private military group comprised of mostly inmates and directed by a former chef was able to create an ex- existential crisis for Putin. This is what he's thinking.、Um, he saw it, and it worries him. Now he knows not only he saw it. Those who oppose him within the military also saw it, right? So the fact that every Chinese is aware of that that worries him.、Um, Chi- some Chinese asked a question that I think Xi Jinping has asked himself many times, and so the question they asked is: Is there a Chinese、uh, Prigozhin, and who is that person? Right, 
Of course, the PLAs does, doesn't um, the PLA doesn't use mercenaries. When Chinese citizens ask this question, uh, they're not asking, "Well, do we have do we use mercenaries right to fight <clears throat> to fight for us?" They're asking this question to imply that they'd like to see a person like Prigozhin who dared to challenge the big boss, in this case, Xi Jinping. That's why they're asking the question, like, is there a Chinese Prigozhin? Um, and Xi Jinping asked the question because he's fearful of such a person. And he wants to know if, he wants to know um, of all the generals he has promoted and trusted, who is likely to go against him, right? Almost every China expert I listened to today said that Xi Jinping is going through his list to make sure that he doesn't have the same problem um, as his buddy Putin uh, did or does. So, you know, you have to know that um, since Xi Jinping became the leader, he has removed or punished or reprimanded over 200 PLE senior officers, and he promoted 69 gen generals who are supposedly loyal to him. Now, by comparison, Hu Jintao promoted 60 generals and Jiang Zemin 64. So they're all in the 60s. That just tells you uh, none of the CCP leader or lead leaders uh, trusted the military leadership that the previous regime or, or, or his predecessor has passed on to him. They all replaced them and they're all putting their own people. Um, Chinese leaders all fear their military commanders in general. And this is precisely because the, the CCP leaders have a saying, uh, the regime is born out of the, the, barrel of, the barrel of a gun. So when Mao Zedong was around, when he was um, when he was the leader, he once ordered the commanders of the eight military zones to switch their jobs. So they just, and that happened like very quickly, right? So they, he had eight commanders and they, he ordered them to swap, uh, swap their jobs. So the, the commander of the Eastern, um, of the East, uh, Eastern military theater, sorry. Um, took up the, the commandership in, in the Western region. So they, he, he had them all switch job. And when it happened, he, uh, it happened very quickly and they were immediately sent to their new job and they could only take one bodyguard with them. They were not allowed to take any other uh, subordinates with them. They could only take one person with them. That just shows you when, um, when someone has been in their military post long enough, that person or has or has become really has become really good at what he does uh, or has become powerful um, it's difficult for the CCP leader or leaders to trust that military um, to trust that military leader so and I have talked before that Xi Jinping has two unique concerns about launching a war in the Taiwan Strait and this is not just um, my me talk, saying it, I've heard other experts talking about this as well. Um, you know how the PLA soldiers don't use, don't train with real weapons. Um, so Xi Jinping's first concern is by giving real weapons to soldiers um, during time of war, he will be concerned uh, with the question, will they turn against him? because now they, they have real weapons. And the second concern is exactly the situation Putin has, um, has with Wagner. His fear is that his wartime military leaders will become powerful and popular among the people, and they will use their influence or their success um, on the battlefield to stage a coup against him. And that's his second concern, because this has happened many times uh, in Chinese history. Uh, so there are historical anecdotes. And this is exactly the things that Chinese netizens are talking about online. They use these historical anecdotes to make insinuations 
about upcoming dynastic changes. Um, they compare the Russian drama to the um, Anlu Shan rebellion of the Tang Dynasty, uh, in which the emperor was forced to flee. They also compared the the Russian uh, incident to the Chengqiao mutiny, which started, which began the Northern Song Dynasty, and they also compared to the um, Wu Sangui, who led the Qing troops into China, the Qing Dynasty troops into China, and ended. Ming Dynasty. So as Chinese people are actively talking and sharing ideas online about these historical anecdotes, I think Xi Jinping knows what people are thinking about and what they are implying. And that obviously worries him. Um, the Chinese military recently issued a document regulating the social interactions of military officers, and the document urges them to continuously purify and cleanse their social circles, including friends and families. This means that the, the, uh, the party or the Central Military Commission wants to control who the officers interact in their everyday life. So if the military commission uh, doesn't believe that you should have a certain friend or you should date a certain woman, then you must cut the tie. And now this is unprecedented in, in, in the recent history of the PLA. I think in the early years of its history, it has happened, right? Because the party tells you who you can marry, who you can, who you can see, like they control everything. But in recent, um, <clears throat> since 1949, this has not happened. So this is really unprecedented in the recent history of PLA. And <clears throat> what does that tell us? It only indicates that Xi Jinping's high level of insecurity, um, and it came from the lack of loyalty within the PLA. So I think Xi Jinping will be more relentless in purging people that he doesn't trust, and he will demand um, more absolute loyalty from people. And that is extremely dangerous for the PLA and for his regime because the person who is who appears to be most loyal to a dictator is usually the first person who turns against him. That has happened many times in Chinese history and has exactly what happened in Russia today. So with that said, um, that's you know we should we should keep our eye on on the development in in Russia and as well as uh, the Chinese responses um, in China. Uh, I think I think the Russia Ukraine war is almost like a dress rehearsal. It's it's a dress rehearsal for or a warning. I shouldn't say dress rehearsal. It's it's too positive, but it's it yeah it serves like a, a warning sign to Xi Jinping. Um, the, the, the only question that needs to be answered is, well, will he get it? Will he get all the, you know, the writings, the writing on the wall? Will he get the warnings? Um, so that's just what I have found so far within a number of hours. I'll keep an eye on that for you, and um, I'll wrap up my presentation here. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see what... Um, I, I will provide several links. I didn't have time to, I, I made a PPT, but I didn't have time to, um, I'll provide several links that will, that they are in Chinese that may be helpful for those of you who want to um, see the references in Chinese when I wrap up this, this conversation or this live stream. All right, let me see if people have questions for me. Okay, Charles Womack. Lay, do you think the MSS has interest in you and your show? Mainstream media? Is that what you mean by MSS? Would you see this as a compliment? Of course. Yeah, if they're interested in me, then of course I will. I see that as a compliment. Um, let me see. Thank you. Let me see if there's... I'll go through the, the super chat. The super stickers first. Let me see if there are questions.
Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just answer the question from 1307, unlucky. Is there a possibility of the re-emergency of a yellow turban army with the many disasters occurring in China? I'm of the opinion that the frustration of the Chinese people may boil. Um, I, I think it's possible. I think you're right. You, you hit it on the nail that the frustration of the Chinese people, um, it, it's... It's it's not a matter of whether it, I think it's boiling. It's not it's not uh, it's it's boiling already. It's just a matter of degree, right? Intensity. So I think it's possible. So from from B K Lao, what will happen to unlimited friendship? There's never such a thing as unlimited friendship between uh, Putin and Xi Jinping. I do not think Putin if if Putin has a choice he would not want to create that alliance with Xi Jinping. I don't think he really, I think he, from the bottom of his heart, I think he looks down upon, upon Xi. I really get that feeling. Uh, but he has no choice, right? So he has nobody to, to, to turn on but Xi Jinping, which is, which is sad, which is really, I think, a bad calculation by the West. Uh, I think it was really just um a mistake for, for the United States to, to somehow uh, turn Putin to Xi Jinping. But I don't think Putin really respects Xi Jinping that much. Now for Xi Jinping, he, I think he, I think he really respects Putin as a, as a iron man, because if you, if you look at the CCP's propaganda, they all phrased Putin as the iron man of Russia. So he really sees him as a, a, a tough, a, as a tough guy, as a formidable leader, but I don't think CCP leader can trust anyone. That's their problem. They do not trust anyone, even their friends. So, so by definition, this Xi Jinping cannot and will not trust Putin, even though he declares or he declared him as his best friend. So Jeff Ramos, really 60 CCP leaders have been changed. How could they maintain order then? Um, no, more than, if you're talking about the CCP leaders, it's more than 60. I'm talking about the, the PLA officers, generals. Yeah, he promoted 69 since the, in the past 10 years. And his predecessor, Hu Jintao, promoted 60. And his predecessor, Jiang Zemin, pr promoted 64. So... They all like to get rid of the, the generals and putting their people. So how could they maintain, maintain order? Maintain order is not that important, but having loyalty is more important, right? So if you include the this civilian office um, officials, it's it's in the, it's, it's more than 60. So. Unconventional ideas. I'm just sorry. I'm just picking random questions. Um, if you have questions, put my name in the front so I know it's addressed to me. Uh, will this unconventional ideas, will this bring up bad memories surrounding Bo Xilai and his attempts to assassinate Xi Jinping and then to execute his own military coup? Um, I think... It's not a matter of bringing up bad memories. I think that the bad memories have always stayed with Xi Jinping in the past 10 years. Um, the, the bad memories, I mean, because he's, he's constantly challenged with all kinds of threats from his enemies, uh, both inside and outside China. And people say that he is, he has, I mean, from his perspective, done a good job, you know, putting out these threats and stating power and being able to consolidate his power more and more. Um, but that present a problem, you know, because, you know, he, he, on, on the surface, all, all the seven Politburo members are his, you know, loyalists. But people say they don't, you don't know what these people are thinking. You don't know what the what's you know if these people will turn against him in the event of a coup, 
right? And so he he does not know that either. So it's just that's just the nature of CCP politics. From Alan Mendel, thank you for the insightfulness of timely, important developments. I introduce my students of critical thinking to the broadcast tonight. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Silas Larson, didn't she put his reputation on the line? Didn't he say that he and Putin were doing something the world had not seen in a hundred years? Yes. Um, one of the first thing that I think one of the biggest impact of what, what has happened today in Russia on Xi Jinping is he probably has realized that his policy of um, alliance with Russia to counter the United States um, in Chinese, Lian e kang mei, uh, that policy, that strategy has failed. So, so you're asking, has he put his reputation on the line? But my argument, has any CCP leader been concerned with reputation? I mean, their, their, their claim to reputation is only, you know, I don't think they ever cared about their reputation. If they do, if, they, if, if they're serious about their, their reputation, they wouldn't do so many stupid things that they did. So uh, their claim that their reputation is um, at risk is, is only to get back or get even with their opponent. It's, it's only like, for example, when Joe Biden called him a dictator and the, the foreign ministry spokeswoman fought back. Um, do you really think Xi Jinping cares about what people call him? You know, I mean, is he not aware that he's, he's you know, that I, I really don't think so. But it's it's something that they're going to make an issue out of for sure as a way to uh, get back, you know, to, to, to get even with the Americans. From Tamolio Samamancha, does the PLA military branches likely have better relations and cooperation than the Russian military? Dictatorship military elites typically hate each other. I don't know. I asked that question to one of the uh, people that that I talked to, um, China experts that I talked to today, and I think it's it, it, you raised a very good question. That's really comparing uh, the CCP military to the Russian military, and 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 compare their similarity. I mean, they are more similar, right? They're, they're obviously, they're more similar than the military between the between the PLA and the American military. But in terms of how the differences or the nuances, that requires uh, more research and, and more digging. So uh, I asked that question today. But yeah, uh, that's a very good question. But we'll save that for, for some future live streams. They typically hate each other. I wouldn't say hate is the most accurate word. They don't trust each other. They feel insecure um, among themselves, right? They do not have friends, but they have many f uh, enemies. And one of the resentments, actually, maybe I should say, one of the resentments the PLA officers have uh, against Xi Jinping is, is actually financial. Because uh, Chen Zemin was the CCP leader that, that established this very corrupt practice that you can pay money to get promoted. So every military ranks comes with a price. So in order for you, if you are a military officer and if you want to be promoted, you need to prepare uh, some huge chunks of money uh, to be promoted. So there's a price tag and they're not cheap. They're very expensive. Um, they're in the for, for if you want to be like a, a general level, um, like a major general, you need to have like in the um, s not seven digit, like eight digit, like tens of millions of yuan range to be uh, to get to get promoted. So a lot of the people have already spent money 
they have already made the investment with the thinking that once they get into those positions, they can get their money back by selling, you know, because then they become powerful. They can sell positions. They can sell ranks to the lower ranking officers, right? So they, I mean, they, all, they, will, they will make money. But then when Xi Jinping came on board, he uh, dismantled that practice. He, he, I mean, I mean, from his perspective, you shouldn't military, you shouldn't have this kind of corruptive practice. So he dismantled that. So it made some of the corrupt military officers um, resentful because they feel like they're they lost a lot of money because they they paid a lot of money to be in that position, and then now their their chance to make money um, is gone. So um, that's one reason. All right, let me see if there are other questions. Um, let me see. All right. Um, from Mitsu. With the training center in Cuba, do you think China would be stupid to try and land invasion into the U.S. view Cuba? No, I, I do not think, I think China, I think CCP in general is very careful with a direct military conference. Like it can create, it's it's fearful of a, a, a real, a serious war with the United States, but it will try to create these incidents to provoke war uh, or provoke situation. Uh, it's very, it's highly dangerous, but but it wants to, some people say the, the 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 Cuba incident or development is CCP's latest test, stress test to the uh, Biden administration to see if they're serious about, uh, you know, just to see how they would respond. I, I, I read that. So, yeah. I think the CCP is very careful not to get into a, like a uh, a full scale war with the United States, but it will try to uh, use other means to exert its influence uh, to uh, to gradually this um to to gradually uh, CC, CC, this is this is a topic for CCP's military strategies. Uh, we can do a, a separate live stream on that yeah now i i think the chances for the ccp to have a to invade the united states mainland is very very small it's i think it's it it does not dare to do that all right um sumiland uh that's part of that's part of what Prigozhin complained about Russian forces being under-equipped, unpaid, and untrained. Wagner gets money from Africa, gold and diamonds. Yeah, but I've also read that actually, uh, I think Prigozhin has been planning for this coup attempt. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's severely under-equipped or underpaid. I mean, there might be inst instances where the payment may be delayed, but I think Russia in general probably have or has financial difficulties. I think it rather, I think rather the, the, um, the Wagner group has been accumulating weapons and um, ammunitions to prepare for this coup. I do not think you know, its accusation is 100% true, but it has been preparing or, or, or scheming for this coup. But as far as why, you know, it's suddenly ended so abruptly um, is, is very interesting. So, yeah. Um, from Silas Larson, the payment for promotion thing is ironic since the British had that centuries ago 
at the time of the opium wars. Um, the payment for promotion thing, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're referring to. If you can be more specific, maybe I can address that. So uh, if PLE is not using real guns and ammo in practice, they are not trained well by definition. You're right. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that they never use real guns and am ammunition in practice, but they try to cut down that as much as they can. The whole point is they try to prevent the, um, I mean, they do use, of course, real real weapons in, in military exercises because they have to, but the whole point is they try to prevent the soldiers um, have access to ammunition and guns uh, unnecessarily because they fear of the consequences. Um, Max Schroeder, China's GDP per capita is 12,000 US dollars, which is comparable to Malaysia's. India's GDP is um, USD. An average Chinese has middle income status in the world. Why has China done well? Well, China's GDP is significantly overstated. I made a video about China's real GDP. I think it's, it's much less. Um, so I don't. I do not think China's GDP per capita is twelve thousand dollars. I think it's in the thousands. It's definitely not twelve thousand. So, uh, but then you could say, well, Chinese China's population is also uh, overstated. Um, yes, but it's overstated, overstated by less proportion, less proportionately than the GDP. So China's GDP per capita is 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 under ten thousand dollars. That's just my rough estimate based on my calculation of the China's GDP. All right, I'll take one last question. Um, BK Lao, heard that PLA is trying to recruit uh, Gurkhas units in Tibet like the British and Indian Army did. This could be China's Wagner group. I have not heard about that. It could be, yeah. It's it's I think the the, the CCP is it's interesting how uh, somebody says Xi Jinping likes to copy what the United States does, and and the whole idea of uh, the Cuba the Cuba crisis, Cuba do you say Cuba or Cuba? Anyways, um, is they want to they want to create uh, like they see Cuba as like the Cuba to the United States is like Taiwan to China. So they want to create, uh, they want to replicate a same situation like in Taiwan, in Cuba, for the United States, right? So they say, well, you do this in Taiwan and I do this in Cuba. So that's that's the idea. But uh, if you're saying that they're recruiting uh, military militia in Tibet, um, yeah, sometimes they, they like to copy what others do. Uh, maybe they like to copy Putin as well. But then I don't know if, I don't know after what happened today, I don't know if they're still, if they still think it's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it. Um Okay, uh, Starry Knight. Lei, what do you answer those who say that what happened is all a sham, a piece of acting between the head of Wagner and Putin as to root out the traitors in the Russian military? Yes, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. But um, I tend not to believe that because if Putin wants to root out those in the uh, in the Russian military, he doesn't. He doesn't need to have this kind of drama. I don't know. I um. Um, it's hard to believe that. Although there is a possibility, um, I I think there is a chance. I you can never say never, but I think the chances is, is small. I think what's really interesting is um, 
obviously, Wag there, there are people who are against Putin who are supporting Wagner. That's obvious, right? And uh, and those are not a small number of people. So um, he obviously has supporters inside uh, Kremlin who want to see Putin fall. Uh, but I think he probably realized that he will not replace uh, he will not replace Putin, but he will be, uh, what's it, uh, uh, pr pr I forgot his name for a second. Sorry, what's his name? Uh, Prigozhin, right? He re Once he realized that he will be used by those who oppose Putin, but they will not let him to replace him, uh, then I think he changed his mind. Then he, again, is only a mercen mercenary, uh, who are helping, who are helping uh, Putin's opposition um, gain power. And then once he realizes that, he, I think he backed off because if you compare, then his personal bond with Putin, if, he's, if his role is a mercenary, then he would rather do it for Putin because they have 30 year history, right? Um, and then, so, um, so I think it's, I think the, it's, it's really the, the power struggle between, uh, though him and then those who opposes, uh, Putin in the Kremlin. I think somehow they, they didn't iron out their, uh, their agreement. So, so the guy backed off, said, I'm not going to do this. Um, and if you listen to Putin's speech Friday night, he, he used some very strong words, but he never named uh, Prigozhin. He never mentioned his name in his speech, right? So, so um, yeah, I think it's all, you have all these men who have tremendous egos, and then once their egos don't line up, or then, you know, and I think he's smart, and I think he's he's probably right. I think he made the right move for himself. He does not want to be used by another in another group, um, and then and then he may not end very well with the other group. See, so I think he, I think he's very smart in in making that decision. So that's just my assessment. But what do I know? I mean, just based on everything that I've read and I've um, listened to today, that's just my gut feeling. I think the chances for for him to come up with a scheme with Putin to do this, uh, to overthrow uh, the, the, the the defense minister and then the, the, the chief commander of the Russian military, I think is, is very small. That's just my opinion. Okay, so I've talked for uh, an hour. Uh, my focus is on the CCP because I, I see myself as an expert on the CCP. I don't see myself as an expert on the on the on, on the Rus Russian military. So, uh, so the whole focus of this is to tell you the Chinese response and the significant the significant impact of this on um, the CCP politics on China. And I think that's what uh, what matters. All right, I'll end it here. Have um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you next week. We shall talk about China's unemployment rate next week. I've already calculated it. It's uh, it's very very eye opening. So join me next week, next Tuesday. All right, and I'll keep my promise. I'll do it next Tuesday. So see you, see you then. Thank you. Bye bye.